guys, so the last thing that came on that I watched was at 11 here, 11 p.m. Eastern time, guys. Uh, granted, you know, I live in New York, so it was 11 Eastern. And I watched, I'm here to give my thoughts on the first two episodes of Legend of Korra. Uh, yeah, Legend of Korra. This was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Now, I'm not really going to give into really the, you know, the synopsis of the episodes, but I'm just going to talk about my thoughts on it so far. So, I hope you enjoy it, guys. Uh, it seems that this takes place, let's talk about the setting. It takes place 70 years after the first Avatar, um, which is pretty interesting, and in doing so, Aang and Zuko created this combined, uh, like, nation, basically, and the center of this nation is known as, uh, Empire City. Uh, at Republican City, excuse me. <laughs> um, and we introduce into, we're introduced to the next incarnation of the Avatar, uh, Korra. And since a little girl, she was able to, she's from a, she's from the Water Tribe, and she's able to, she's she can do Earth, she can Earth bend, she can she can uh, fire bend, and she can use water bending like the best. But what she can't do is airbend, which is pretty interesting. And so we kind of see where that comes into play as well. Um, the setting and the, 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 the animation is similar to Avatar. Nothing's really changed too much, but it's... The following, I like the character of Korra. You know, she, it's she's not traditionally doing it her way. In her way, she, she as is in um, in doing becoming the Avatar, she has to find her own destiny in a way, which is actually cool. Um, the setting of this of the cities and just all around looks like a like nineteen twenties, nineteen early thirties look. Um, Republican City looks like a mesh of Manhattan, New York, uh, Shanghai, uh, San Francisco, Hong Kong, all the big, those big metropolis cities combined into one, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's a big statue of Ang in the bay that kind of reminds you of the Statue of Liberty, so it's kind of interesting. Um... We get to see, um, a couple of characters from, well, one character mainly from the original Avatar series, and we get to see Katara. We get to see Katara, she's really, she's, she's the only one that we've actually seen in the show. Older, she's older, but she's still wiser, and she still, uh, represents the water, you know, the the uh, water tribe and we get to see her son you know uh her and ang's son uh tenzai tenzai is played by jk simmons uh and we also get to see the the grandchildren the great grandchildren of ang and katara no grandchildren excuse me of uh, but we don't get to see the other kids of ang and katara because there's actually it's stated that there are actually three of them and Tensai is supposed to train Katara, Korra to uh, airbend, uh, but he can't do it right at the moment. So basically, you know, Korra has to find her way. And it's like, all right, if you can't come to me, then I'm going to come to you. And so that's where her whole adventure uh, kicks off from there with Katara's blessing, which is kind of interesting. Um... So, 
basically it's kind of it's kind of weird because when she arrives in Republican City, she's like a a fish out of water. She she's really new to the big city. She doesn't know you know where to go. You know how to get there and you know what to do. For example, like there was a scene where she uh, her her uh, polar bear dog. Uh, <laughs> Um, who I'm forgetting the, the the dog's name, but it's a female. She's basically hungry, and she approaches this vendor, and she's like, "Okay, I would like two of everything." And the woman is like, "Okay, that'll be twenty, whatever the I'm forgetting the money." Um, and she's like, "Well, I don't have any money. Then you don't get anything. What use are you?" So she has to go fish in the pond, which is kind of like to eat, which is kind of funny. She meets this homeless guy in there and then all of a sudden you know she gets the uh, uh patrol guard patrol officer scares them out and she has to leave and in doing so we also get to see more of what's going on while Qatar was there and we also get to see that there's an anti-bending revolution revolutionary group going on called the the equalists um, and they're kind of, and, and I gotta say this, that does remind me a lot of, you know, the benders, air benders are kind of like mutants now, you know, and the equinots are like the MRA that, you know, or the, you know, people that are against mutants, you know, anti-mutant groups. And that was really interesting to see too. Um, we also get to see, uh, Cora meet up with like this gang called the the um, I think they're called the Golden Triads or something. I forget the name of it. Um, and they're 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 using you know the old protection racket to shake down owners of uh you know owners of the uh of establishments. And she basically Cora like takes them out really good. It was funny. And then that's when we get to see the police and their their uh metal benders. So this was like the first, so we actually now know after, I guess now after Toph mastered metal bending, we got to see that metal bending became pretty big later on. And they're, they're kind of like, they use like grapples and stuff, which is really cool. And when Cora's interrogated by the main officer of the group, she is the daughter of Toph. So that was good to see that Toph had kids. Um, we don't know by who, but we know she had, she had a daughter and she, she's like really strict and stuff. And, uh, that was kind of funny. Um, I didn't see any resemblance of Toph. That was the problem. Uh, but when she said my mother and, you know, she knew that she knew, uh, Cora was the avatar. Like everybody knows that cause she did a big press press conference. Um, and that's when she meets up with Tenzai, and Tenzai is like, "Okay, you can stay here, and I'll train you uh, to airbend." And unfortunately, it doesn't really go too well for her <laughs> airbending at first. Uh, so, you know, Cora's getting really frustrated with that, you know, because she can't, she has the inability to master, you know, airbending. So, she basically is introduced to the Republican cities. A famous pro pro uh, bending. It's like a sport where benders play, and tensai is like that's an atrocity to air bend. You know, bending like it's it's it should be banned. And this is also where we get to see more of that. How I said the setting is more like the 1930s, early 1940s or 20s, where everything is played over the radio now. It's it's not there's no televised stuff or anything like that. So it it kind of gave a little a, a little great a difference of modernization of the Avatar universe as well. Um, and she meets two more individuals from that uh, two brothers known as uh, Bo Bo Lin and Mako um, Mako Mako. I hope I'm saying his name right. Is it, Mako right? Is Mako yeah Mako and. Uh, there she she plays with them and by doing that she kind of uses the training that she got from playing the pro bending in her training because actually one day she sees Tenzai actually sees her you know flowing like 
an airbender, you know, that Tai Chi flow that they usually throw. And he even admits like, okay, you know what? You have to find your own path in mastering airbending. It was, it was really well done. I thought this, the first two episodes were really well done. The animation was crisp and clean. Well done. Voiceover acting was done very well. Um, we get to see more of, we got to see the main antagonists of this, this, uh, this, you know, series, the, the, and basically, uh, <laughs> uh, Steve Bloom is, uh, voicing the character. Um, I'm hoping that we see more flashbacks in terms of Aang when he was older, you know, what he was like when he was older before he passed away, uh, what a lot of the characters were older. It, Katara said that all the other people that helped make this world the way it was, they passed away. So that kind of like, wow, no more uh, Sokka, no more, you know, Toph and everybody like that. They're all passed away except for her, you know, and now that gets me more interested in seeing what happened. Did they all, they just died of old age or, you know, was there something else involved in it? But I really enjoyed the first two episodes of this. Um, I knew I was going to enjoy it from the get-go. It wasn't a matter of was I not going to enjoy it or if not, because I enjoyed the first series. I loved it. And I'm glad to know that, you know, this was a hit, a success. I'm, um, it was well done. I love, I've always loved the mesh of Eastern philosophy and Western philosophy in this series. It's always been a big part of me. I thought that was really well done. And I already know that this, it's already got two seasons already, you know, is good. Of, of course, they do it, you know, book one, air, book of air, you know, things like that, which is cool. Um, Korra is a character you, you, you're you going to really get behind, guys. I, I can tell you that right now because I'm a lot of development, a lot of, development of, of her character. She's not doing it the old fashioned way. She's doing it her way of becoming this modern avatar. I mean, the fact that she can already water bend, earth bend and, you know, fire bend is great. You know, she just can't airbend in, 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 in retrospect from Aang, who had kind of a hard time, I think it was earthbending. Yeah. He couldn't do really well. So it was, it was kind of, uh, it's kind of interesting to see that, uh, as well. But like I said, the, the settings were great. Like I said, it, a, a mesh of 1930s, 1940s, um, uh, Rep Republican city, like I said, is a mesh of Hong Kong, New York, Manhattan, uh, San Francisco, like the, the bridges look like the Golden Gate Bridge. And so all those big, those great big cities, you know, it was, it was, it's just fun. And the grandkids of uh, Tenzai are funny. Uh, Aang's uh, children, uh, grandchildren are funny, uh, especially um, the little boy, <laughs> the boy, I'm forgetting his name. He's just really full of uh, spirit. Uh, and it, it just it just makes me wonder. I'm just hoping they 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 explore more of that. there's some backstories too. Like I want to see Aang as a, a grown a grown man and still being the Avatar and stuff like that. Um, but it, it it was great, guys. It, there's nothing really more I can really sum up into words. But that it was just it was just spectacular. You know, it was really well done in my opinion. I really enjoyed what I saw from this series and I look forward to seeing it, it basically just like my brother just said, you know, this looks like it's going to be a very good sequel. And usually sometimes sequels don't live up to their predecessors, but this looks like this is going to be a good sequel. So with that being said, guys, I would just like to say shout out to all the people who worked on this series so far, so far, you guys, you have, you've done for the first two episodes, it's been really great. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys deliver for us in the future of this. Uh, I really enjoyed it, guys. Um, you guys tell me what you thought of Legend of Korra.
the first two episodes. Welcome to Republic City and A Leaf in the Wind. Those were the two episodes that aired today. I know some people saw it already, and that's fine. You know, some people want to watch things early, but I was patiently waiting for this, and um, it was worth the wait, baby. Um, it was worth the wait, guys. Uh, but other than that, this is Mom Vernon Kid. You guys take care.